Coming up next, it's the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. We're going to preview WWE Breaking Point, talk about a bunch of news items coming across the wires for this week, the ratings from all the shows, and we go in-depth on CM Punk, the current World Heavyweight Champion. The Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time starts right now. Number one since 1998 on television, ESPN Radio, and the World Wide Web, this is the Pro Wrestling Report with your host, the man they call Meathead. Frank Cosentino and Damian Nelson. Professional wrestling news, opinion, and information from fans for fans. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. Damian Nelson here, sitting alongside the man they call Meathead for Friday, September 11th, 2009. Meathead. 9 is better than 9909. You know, there's Apple apparently a lot of announcements. There was apparently, apparently, a lot of people that were in Vegas getting married, so it could be nine nine zero nine. What does that mean, though? Nothing at all. Oh, uh, that'd be cool. Just be like, like, remember nine nine ninety nine, the best VMAs ever. Yeah, I do. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, I believe, was the host. Could have been. Also, no, no uh, one's better than Chris Rock hosting the VMAs, though, because you know he was he the first black a, person on the stage. On that with stage, mom. yeah. Oh, gorgeous, loved it. Let's talk about this Sunday on pay-per-view. It's WWE Breaking Point, where all matches, well, some matches, uh, maybe a few matches, end in submission. I say it that way because WWE seems to be concerned or confused on their own as to how this pay-per-view will go down. But we do know what the matches are, especially after this Tuesday night's ECW show meet. Let's start from the bottom of the card and work our way up, at least as the matches are lined up. Great Kali versus Kane. Again. It will be a Singapore Kane match. Kane with a C that time, not the K as in Kane, the participant. Your thoughts on that match? You ever been hit with a Kane with a K? Uh, candy Kane? You ever, a candy you ever been Kane, to, man. Have you ever been to Singapore and spray painted? Uh, I have not. Because uh, that kid got a caning too. I know that's a reference way, way older than most of our viewers. But it was still relevant for you and me. I don't care about this match, and honestly, go to the <laughs> <Really>? next one. <laughs> um, I would expect to see Kane win that match, as it seems to make the most sense going down the road. But ask yourself this. Even if it does, going down the road, what does he get from it? I Kane. don't understand. What is he going to get from it? He won't get anything. You think getting a well, victory, what does he need from it? You think getting a victory over Kane is going to boost him up to the heavyweight championship title run? Getting a victory over Kali means nothing. Absolutely nothing. More news on the Great Kali in another match that wasn't necessarily on TV. <laughs> it Coming was an unscheduled dark match. Uh, DX will take on Legacy in a submissions count anywhere matchup. We saw Raw end uh, this past Monday night from Chicago with Bob Barker as the guest host in a bit of a melee with them pretty much brawling all over the All-State Arena to give a little bit of a preview of this matchup. Submissions will count anywhere. Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase and versus, Ted DiBiase. <laughs> versus Shawn Michaels and Triple H Team DX. You would think, I'm going to channel Dave Hero right now, and it's so funny that people think we have beef between each other. To get Mickey Legacy James. to get Legacy over, you need to have them go over on DX at a pay-per-view. If you want to build up this team and you want to make them relevant, if you want to make them have some steam, actually some importance, Legacy needs to defeat DX at this pay-per-view. Will it happen? Most likely not. I would tend to agree Degeneration X needs to go over, or probably will win this matchup. However, let's take a look back at SummerSlam. This was one of the top matches on what I thought was a very good pay-per-view. That is called SummerSlam from last month. While DX still won that matchup, Legacy showed how great they could be in that match. Do you think we'll have that opportunity again, where Legacy will not necessarily be the end of the day, the opportunity to By the end of the day, up? when they don't win, like they did with Miz and Morrison against... DX, when their feud was against DX, well, you remember the team. No, they need to dominate DX and go over on DX for you to know who they are and to remember them and to, again, be relevant. The Intercontinental Championship will be on the line as John Morrison, the new IC champion from that amazing match on SmackDown last Friday night, going up against Dolph Ziggler, the heir apparent, the man who did uh, get the opportunity to be the number one contender in a three-way match on Superstars a couple of weeks ago. We see that come to fruition tonight on SmackDown. The match announced the match official Dolph Ziggler versus John Morrison. I, for one, meet in am looking forward to this matchup. So a title match hasn't necessarily been giving a submissions 
stipulation to it, but some Correct. donkey match between DX and Legacy has submission stipulations to it. So that tells you what they think of the IC title right now, especially if it opens the card. And, but the only reason it should it could open the card because uh, it will be hot. And we saw Ray Ziggler open the card at SummerSlam. It'll be a great match. It should a be wrestler? a great match. Ray Ziggler. Yeah, I've never heard I of the guy. Just took up the verses. Sorry, just to keep flowing there. Um, I, you know what? I think John Morrison needs to walk out of Breaking Point with the belt. That's ironic that you say that because you said the opposite on Monday Night's radio program. I don't believe I did. Check the archives. I said that John Morrison will go at least another pay per view with the belt. No, you know I what? Well, I, I apologize. I, on this program, 9-11-09, apologize. It was David Octavius Hero that said it was already Dolph Ziggler's time. Uh, Ziggler will eventually capture that title, I think, and pushes forward to another pay-per-view because you'll hear tonight on SmackDown yeah. that uh, John Morrison will say that Rey Mysterio can have an opportunity at that championship anytime, any place when he returns uh, to WWE. So... Wait, uh, when he returns to WWE, are they explaining why he's away from WWE? I don't believe there was an explanation. Because if they're the saying that Ray was gone, if they're saying the that he's gone and isn't able to have the opportunity, that's a big gaping hole, don't you think? Mm -hmm. uh, Jericho, the team of Chris Jericho and the Big Show, will take on the team of Mark Henry and Montel Vontavious Porter for the Tur Unified Tag Team Championships. The only good part about this match, at least going into it for me, is the chance to see what might be the greatest tag team in WWE right now, Chris Jericho and the Big Show together. I don't really care about this match, though. I don't think there's a chance that Henry and MVP can win the titles in this scenario, but we'll see what it does on the actual pay-per-view this Sunday on Breaking Point. It would be a huge bump for him. It really would. It'd be a, a, a magnanimous bump for uh, Henry and MVP, but... Really, Jericho and Show is where the money is, where the heat is, where the steam is, as this huge, you know, uh, tag team, you know, that's just rolling through people, and they're dominant through people. So, yeah, Jericho and uh, Big Show are the ones that are going to go ahead and, you know, win the match and hold on to the Unified Tag Team Championships. The ECW Championship will be on the line as Christian takes on Christian! William Regal. I did that for you. A lot of people said on this very program, a lot of callers have said and a lot of emailers have said that they don't see William Regal in the spot where he could be in a championship match on a pay-per-view. I disagree, and so does WWE, obviously, as he will uh, contest Christian in what is guaranteed to be a longer match than their SummerSlam contest at WWE Breaking Point this Sunday night on pay-per-view. Meathead, will Christian walk out of Montreal still the ECW champion? Christian is Canadian. Hey. Regal is British, and Kozlov is Russian, and Ezekiel is a uh, brother from another mother. So what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. They're actually going to wrestle this time. Regal and Christian. Regal is a submission mat style wrestler. Christian could slap on a, a submission here or a submission there. It's not really what he does. You know, he's a high spot kind of guy. He can do a little mat wrestling, but... Maybe it is time for Regal to go over on Christian. Maybe Christian should move on to something else, get traded. Yeah. I didn't say that. I'm just saying what you say. You don't think he's ready to move up to one of the other brands? I don't think they're going to make a trade. Uh, I think Christian, well, I mean, but here's, and this is what's good. Either one can win that matchup because you sort of want to push Regal because you get the rub for Kozlov and Ezekiel at the same time. If he is the champion and has the stable around him, that could be intriguing for the next several weeks on ECW. And so. it's already being rumored by the IWC that Nigel would be joining them as well. Why? Because Regal's he's, British? Well, then you got to put Sheamus in it, Virgil, um, McIntyre, Drew McIntyre. Yeah. Then you've got the world elite. You do? Hmm. Huh. Uh, CM Punk versus The Undertaker for well, a where world. where would Ezekiel Jackson fit into the world elite if he, unless he says he's from Nigeria? the motherland? CM Punk versus The Undertaker for the World Heavyweight Championship. It will be a submission match. The Undertaker, in my opinion, will no way, shape, or form submit in that matchup, thus meaning I believe CM Punk walks out with the rub, or I, somehow or another they get out of it. I don't know how that or another is, but uh, Undertaker... They've never saying, mentioned that it's a no, not a no-DQ match. Correct. It, there's a way to DQ a chair. Can now be that a the DQ. twin Hebners are gone, though, you can't have another. <laughs> How much for the plastic surgery, brother? That one went over the table. How much for the plastic surgery, brother? 
Your thoughts on this, Matt? I think Punk, Punk still gets the belt coming out of the pay-per-view. Still is the champion coming out. Again, as we explained on the radio show this past Monday on 540 ESPN, and streamed live, by the way, on Justin.tv, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also, by the way, busted out you and Dave Hero. You don't know this yet, but I'm putting this live on primetime right now. I know who took my headphones. I don't care if I was late or not. I watched the video. You took my headphones. The main event, at least from the way it is written on this particular run sheet, Randy Orton versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. It will be an I quit match, but remember, if anyone interferes, Orton loses the world, I'm sorry, the WWE Championship. If it's an I quit match, does that mean they can win by just saying I quit? Because that's not a submission. I quit. That's just saying I quit. I quit. That's just I saying quit. I quit. Well, it's an I quit match. You could fall to the well, ground. Well, when you say no, 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 I no. quit, you submit. No, no, no. You could fall to the ground and say I quit. You're Context. not Oh, terrible. WWE, get now you don't like I quit matches? I like Here's I the quit. worst thing about the I quit, I quit match. The ref with the mic. It gets so obnoxious after a while. Asking, do you give up? <laughs> no! He's got him in a rest spot two minutes into the match. Do you give up? <laughs> Hell no! It just gets very, real old real fast. Repetitive. Um, and again, you know, this I'd is... I'd love to put you in a, a rest spot right now and then choke hold and see if you quit. I quit when I was in the chicken wing by, by Bob Backlund. You did? You Hurts. did. You tapped out. Oh, that I did. Um, With your eye. A lot of people are saying Cena wins this. Horton's been very strong on Raw over the last few weeks. A lot of saying that means... A lot of people saying, rather, that that means John Cena will walk out of Breaking Point, the new WWE Do you know champion. Why a lot of people are saying that? Because Cena hasn't had the belt for a while. That's why they're saying it. Orton walks out, still the champion. Folks. I hope that is the case. Orton's still the champ. That is WWE Breaking Point coming up this Sunday. 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 Have you ever had a Breaking Point with me? Because I've had mine with you. View. Uh, make sure you follow the Pro Wrestling Report on Twitter. We are on Twitter, each of us individually, and for the show as well. The show is PWR Show on Twitter, so be sure to follow it every time we have new additions to the PWRShow.com website and uh, new videos are available, you can go ahead and get notified of those on Twitter. And remember, each week you can select the in-depth, the person that we will cover in-depth right here on this very program yeah. by submitting those suggestions to our Twitter account. Tweet us, if you will. Also, meet Ed, we're on iTunes, uh, the radio show uh, available for audio podcast on iTunes, which had a new iTunes version released uh, Wednesday, which is very good. Um, and also the video podcast, which is in the top 20 video podcasts I've never noticed. in sports I've on iTunes, available as well. Subscribe to both of those podcasts individually. Get notified as soon as new episodes of the show I've are I've never available. noticed differences when iTunes does their uh, new version available because they're always 3.4.5.7. This is 9, so that's a brand new. So it's a brand new 9, 9.0. Yes. Okay, because, I mean, you know, PS3 just did a new update. It was 3.0. And there were some differences there. Are yeah, there going to be differences on iTunes this time? There are differences. I've seen it. I've used it. It is different. Can it you get good. porn on it? Uh, so be sure to check out our Twitter and iTunes accounts. Meet Let's talk about a couple of things that happened this week in history. Back in the day, a couple of things. <laughs> I know what that. happened in history seven years ago. Eight years ago, excuse me. In 1986, WWF's Wrestling Challenge show debuted. Wow. Remember? Saturday nights, 1030 on Channel 18 mm -hmm. here in southeastern Wisconsin. That was Super 18. It was Super 18 at the time, yes. Uh, WCCW, World Class Championship Wrestling, had their Star Wars event, which was a major event for them in 1987. I think Darth Vader went over in the main event. And in 1998, it was the third edition of the Clash of Champions from WCW. On the TBS. And in 1991, it was the WWF King of the Ring. Keep in mind, WWF King of the Ring on pay-per-view didn't debut until 1993. However, 1991 was the actual first event. In Your House, Ground Zero from Louisville, Kentucky in 1997. The significant moment on that pay-per-view was JR taking the first of a series of stunners uh, from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Hot! All that this week in history. A couple of title changes. Bret Hart defeating Erin R. Scheister to win the King of the Ring tournament in 1991. Uh, the Headbangers, Mosh and Thrasher. You know, um, I was always wondering what the capital of Thailand is. Bangkok. They were our first interview on this program in 1998, Mosh and Thrasher. Is that the day, let me ask you this. Assaulted. It was a great day in PWR history, right? I mean, if we're talking history, a great day in PWR history. Well, shortly after the show launched. Do you know why it was a great day? Why is that? That was the day you met me. 
Ed Baker's defeated Owen Hart and Davy Boy Smith, uh, along with LOD and the Goblins for the Tag Team Championship. And Davy Boy Smith won two titles on uh, this week in 1999, WWF Hardcore title uh, by beating the Big Boss Man and the Hardcore title by beating Al Snow. I'm sorry, he gave it to Al Snow. And uh, Colin Delaney was born in 1986, and Molly Holly, mm. born in 1977 this week. Oh, that means uh, I've got five years on her. Oh, I just gave her the date. Let's go to the news desk. A couple of news items, several of which are very hot, coming off the wires for this week. <laughs> Coco Beware's wife uh, recently passed away from cancer. Obviously, our condolences and best wishes, best wishes go out to Coco Beware, who was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year. WWE has changed the December 13th Armageddon pay-per-view to a new title. That title being TLC Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. That's going to take place in San Antonio, Texas, and this is along the string of many WWE pay-per-views that have had title changes due to their desire to freshen up the product. Now, what's interesting is the Night of Champions pay-per-view buy rate information has come in. It looks like they will exceed their 2008 numbers for that particular pay-per-view with no changes to be given. Breaking Point will tell an interesting story coming up in September, this Sunday actually, replacing the very popular Unforgiven pay-per-view. We've talked about this before, Damien, how... Uh, and we're not saying, TN Damien, that WWE says, hmm, I see TNA doing it. Maybe we should do it. Because they've got a lot of gimmick-themed pay-per-views. And it, again, the gimmick doesn't have to go all the way through the pay-per-view. It just has to be in your main purchasable matches. Well, Breaking Point is a mess as far as what they're trying to... What is Breaking Point? It's a way to say we have a gimmick pay-per-view. Yeah, but... but, but Really, have they communicated that effectively? No, they all the changed, promos we've seen this week. Now they put submission on the title there. It just, I don't really. What's the brand breaking point? If I were Arkham Asylum, I'd be upset because I'd be upset that they don't know what the pay per view is. TNA has announced a house show for Racine, Wisconsin, on June, on October twenty fourth. It may be the greatest spectacle in racing. Uh, also in Green Bay, Wisconsin, on October twenty fifth. Smart fans will get that. Talent have, has been announced for that show. Uh, so far, including the likes of AJ Styles, uh, Samoa Joe, Matt Morgan, Beer Money, Scott Steiner, the Motor City Machine Guns, Rhino. Team Wait, of, did you say Beer? The team of Lethal Consequences, Kip James. Yeah, she kept doing Bashir Kiyoshi. A lot of people on that show. Are we supposed show, to help put Kim James back on, uh, over again? October 24th and 25th <laughs> in Milwaukee. I'm sorry, in Racine and Green Bay, Wisconsin. Tickets for that go on sale September 11th today. When they go on the road, is there catering? Because I'm, I'm wondering if I can get the Damian Nelson rub. Sean O'Hare was arrested last Sunday for battery and criminal trespassing uh -oh. after his girlfriend told the police he was, uh, she was attacked by him at their home in Georgia. According to the actual police reports, his girlfriend um, claims that he started yelling at her and throwing things with no provocation on her side yeah. and that she did not know what caused the attack, though it wasn't the first time. There's never a first time, to be honest with you. Pro Wrestling reporter Alex Marvez recently spoke to Taz, and Taz had some interesting comments about his move to TNA. And I quote, I couldn't be happier. TNA reminds me of the original ECW, but with, real TV, but with a real TV contract, real money, and a lot of big names. We're not at the level of WWE yet. We're still young. There will be some growing pains, but the work ethic and passion are there to give our audience the best product possible. I do a little bit of everything. Backstage, I'm assigned to watch talent that they want me to help nurture. I've also given feedback on the TV shows from a different perspective, having not only wrestled for WWE, but worked in the studio. This is why Taz on commentary makes a ton of sense. He's got, you, you, you gain a bunch of pedestrian knowledge of television production by being involved in television production. Don West had come from the Home Shopping Network. Mike Tanay, however, had come from WCW and really has some, some, some knowledge as well. But his Mike Tanay really... Taz adding what might be the WWE polish techniques to TNA programming will certainly help the company. But Mike Tanay coming in from WCW gave you a uh, person that was able to call wrestling matches. Not That's why he was there. Not sports entertainment matches. Mike Tanay can call wrestling matches. The professor. Yes. He has a wrestling background. He's, you know, well-versed in Lucha Libre wrestling. And he lives in Las Vegas. Viva! Yeah. Uh, but Taz may be able to give a couple pointers. Again, we don't know how far deep or embedded Taz was in the WWE production. He has worked in the studio. Mm -hmm. So we do know he's worked in the studio. Voiceovers and stuff. Uh, he's done, yeah, VOs and other stuff for uh, 
WWE. So maybe he can offer, hey, you know what? I'm not saying, I'm just saying, maybe you could go this direction with this instead. Maybe you can get the guys in to do this. Let's retake that over. The Sun, which is a UK newspaper, had some comments from Nigel McGuinness about his uh, situation, his potential signing with World Wrestling Entertainment, and I quote, I'm not 100% on board yet. I still have to cross some I's and dot some T's, but it's looking positive. It's been a long time coming for sure. Ten years since I first took a bump, and at about 18 since that fateful day I sat in Wembley Stadium at SummerSlam 1992 and said I was one day going to be a pro wrestler still. Like I said, I don't want to tempt fate until it's all signed, sealed, and delivered. How ironic is that, that, you know, a lot of the guys, when we talk to them now on the radio program or on the TV program, or when... Kip James next Wednesday. Or when Damian heads on down to Orlando to, you know, can some interviews for us. How ironic is it that these guys were the fans that they were when they were kids? Christian and Edge will tell you exactly where they were. Edge WrestleMania 6, 6 yeah. Toronto. You know, you've got Nigel telling you that he was in Wembley Stadium watching the Bulldog and, you know, Brett the Hitman Hart. Um... And those are the guys that I really, truly enjoy watching, following, and whatever. It's the ones that, you know, maybe come from the sports background that don't really have that wrestling background that, you, you know, I don't really get Goldberg. that. I don't get really that emotionally invested Goldberg. into. Goldberg. Former Survivor star Jenna Maraska is done with TNA Wrestling. It couldn't have happened soon enough. Her contract recently came up for renewal, and uh, they, said they no. could not come to an agreement. Uh, she debuted um, back in March, and uh, now who cares? Ken Anderson and Ooh Manga are both free. Free at last. Uh, there are no compete clauses. Free at last, for... free at last, Lord Almighty. I've been freed at last. There are no compete clauses with World Wrestling Entertainment, have both expired. And uh, Ken Anderson was making some good cheeseburgers on his most recent video, which uh, he then suffered an injury from. Uh oh, he's prone. I don't not know why you raise that up. Not as prone as, say, uh, a young man who will be on Raw this Monday night. To young? Give a, There's to nothing be, young about him. That was being facetious. To give a shocking statement? Is that what the term Potentially was? Potentially career-altering announcement, I believe it is. Uh, we also, you'll hear on SmackDown, this is a bit of a spoiler. Whoop, 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 whoop. Daddy Long's got someone who is going to be debuting on SmackDown next week that will change the face of SmackDown. Holla, 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 holla. That's, you know what, somebody mentioned this before. We need to go in depth on Thaddeus Long. Who knew, you, there's a lot to talk about. As a Teddy Long, Theodore Long, Theodore R. Long. You know, he's got, what a lot of you don't realize is he's got a, such a storied history back in the WCW. That Which is a defunct wrestling organization that went out of business in 2001 and was purchased by WWE in 2001. Just a little historical perspective. The great Kali and the Big Show were allegedly involved in well, a legitimate... Well, they had a backstage uh, dark match. Allegedly involved in a legitimate fight uh, over something that happened in the ring. Uh, somebody swung at somebody else, and somebody tripped over a gym bag, and it was over. So, really not as big a story as it's being portrayed on the web. Or as uh, big a show as it could have been. I mean, you have disagreements. This stuff happens, you know, fairly You have often. JBL picking fights with people. I mean, that kind of stuff happens. World Wrestling Entertainment recently instituted what they're calling their Talent Life Skills Initiative. Now, the I believe idea, that's down in FCW, correct? Well, it's overall, and uh, the idea, and it's really a great initiative by WWE, is to get people prepared for the fame they may encounter, saving their money, getting appropriate health care coverage, which, why doesn't WWE just provide it? Um, but uh, all those things to prepare them for... Uh, their life as a WWE superstar. Good move because a lot of people. Now, this have is sports have been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. um, you'll watch a See show. Where they got them, huh? you'll Which watch is worse, the NFL or the NBA? You'll watch a show like Hard Knocks on HBO. You'll watch a show like Hard Knocks on HBO, where you know they see the rookie class talking to a media relations person. You know how do you deal with this? How do you deal with interviews? How do you do? You know it's life in the professional sports realm. You know you need to learn how to deal with that. Guys like Damien and myself, we've had to learn how to deal with all this stuff ourselves. You know with all the people running up to us and whatnot. Let's go to the ratings for this past week. Actually, this Monday's Bob Barker Price is Right Raw scored a 3.8 rating. Come on down! Up from 3.6 last week. WWE SmackDown also just uh, got a little tick up in the ratings, a 2.0, uh, and uh, that was last week's SmackDown rating. Question about that. Is it smarter to have the guest hosts on Raw or on SmackDown? No, because what if the ZZ Top segment was on SmackDown? And the spoilers were read on and said that was the worst pile of yeah. 
whatever. No, but then again, live, I think spoilers live, encourage more people to watch than discourage people to watch. Not necessarily. Live excitement of you don't know what's going to happen is better for Raw. Uh, TNA Impact, the world controversy surrounding the rating for last week. You got a point nine six cash. <laughs> got a point nine six rating, and if you haven't noticed, TNA. Uh, has done some uh, differences in their programming. I mean, Dixie Carter said it on this very program when we interviewed her a couple of weeks ago. She's the president of TNA Wrestling. It's a focusing more on the younger talents. And this show was featured, uh, or headlined rather, by Hernandez, Matt Morgan, AJ Styles, really in what was a great episode of Impact, in my opinion. However, a .96 rating could have a little bit of concern for the company. Well, there are two things to consider. The first of which is a potential DVR snafu, where instead of TNA Impact, last week's episode was called TNA Wrestling, so a lot of people did not uh, get the me. opportunity to record that. And it has happened in the past, by the way. Not using it as, as a potential reason in sure. the past, but it has happened in the past uh, for that program. Luckily for us, uh, TNA does replay that kind of thing Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. The replay so got I a point to, three. I happen to sniff around and say, where's my wrestling episode? Uh-oh. And then I you know, did the keyword search and found it later for Saturday and noticed that I had to change the series setup. Last time Impact got a rating that low was uh, October 29th, 2008, actually. Uh, so it's about a 15% plunge in the ratings over the prior week. But again, uh, many are saying that this DVR problem may have uh, been a reason for that because those Remember, are Remember, football season has also ratings. started as well. There was a NFL game going on, at least here in the, the Milwaukee NFL area. Network? Well, here in the Milwaukee area, the Green Bay Packers were playing. Is that with Brett Favre, right? Aaron Rodgers. Did you see the mustache on him? ECW wow. uh, last week got a 1.35 rating, Meathead, and uh, as we discussed, that was uh, higher than the week before. You know what it was due to? You know what it was due to? Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Hmm. Not because of the ECW talent. Sheamus. No, it was due to the Shawn I'm Michaels. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to take from the Sheamus, Shelton, Benjamin pull apart that happened this week on ECW. I'm not sure who I'm supposed to be cheering for. They're not telling me right. Well, Remember, depends. we only cheer for who Vince McMahon Smurf it. We'll cheer for who we want to. Uh, WWE Superstars gets a point eight rating last week, and now we'll also be covering the United Kingdom ratings because uh, most, a lot of our viewers actually come from across the pond. So, interesting note from over there, WWE Raw getting a uh, 120,000 viewers total. 30, Is that in pounds? 36,000 viewers in its initial airing. Second replay got uh, 39,000. First replay got 45,000 views. TNA Impact with 58,000 viewers, and it's one showing. WWE SmackDown with 69,000 viewers over across the pond. And we have a web and a poll, rather, up on our website at pwrshow.com where you can vote for the show that you thought was the best of the week. And this week, the winner was WWE SmackDown with 67% of the votes, obviously certainly attributed to that great matchup between Rey Mysterio and John That's Morrison. where spoilers helped. Because the word got out that Ray and Joe Mo were going to put on a show stealer. Speaking of word getting out, we'd like to thank Twitter user Daniel Storer for submitting the name CM Punk, who is the person we are going to go in depth on this week. And what we do in depth is we talk a little bit more in detail about a particular superstar, name, or event uh, that you submit to us at, again via our Twitter page. And our Twitter username is PWR Show. So, meet at CM Punk. Let's give a little bit of foundation, a little bit of story about a man who really got his roots in our area. Uh, the Milwaukee, Chicago area. Uh, Philip Jack Brooks is his name. Born on October 26, 1978. It's 1978, by the way, not 1978. He's a five-time world champion, having won the Ring of Honor World Championship once, ECW Championship once, World Heavyweight Championship three times. And he's also been World Tag Team Champion with Kofi Kingston, who we went in depth on last week, and also the Intercontinental Champion, he is actually the 19th WWE Triple Crown Champion, winner of the 2008 and 2009 Money in the Bank ladder matches. And right there, me dad, what a lot to have accomplished since coming into WWE just three years ago. Actually coming in as a mobster, hanging off of the well, old school. As the That's how he entered into a WWE, in, you know, WWE ring. But before that, he got his... Uh, he, was initial, he was an initial face of ECW. When ECW started, they aired promos for this guy that was going to be straight edge. No alcohol, no drugs. And before that, he was uh, in Ring of Honor, primarily on, along the independent circuit as well, but primarily in Ring of Honor. Uh, he did win the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship, as we said before, the World Championship. He was the first head trainer of ROH uh, and, uh, until his 2005 signing with WWE, where he went to OVW, Ohio Valley Wrestling. 
Uh, he won every championship available in that federation. Uh, spent a lot of time in the IWA Mid-South organization as well. Is that a little Ian Rotten down there? He had high-profile feuds with Coke Cabana and Chris Hero. Uh, when the, won the light heavyweight championship and the heavyweight championship five separate occasions, beating people such as AJ Styles, Eddie Guerrero, and Coke Cabana for that championship. Mm -hmm. Had a 55-minute TLC match and a 93-minute two out of three falls match in several 60-minute time limit draws. Tell me why. You and I have actually seen Colt Cabana versus CM Punk go 60 minutes to a draw. Absolutely. Matter of fact, I was ringside, well, literally on the apron while you were running the production as we watched Mid-American Wrestling and this main event between CM Punk and Colt Cabana. So we have seen, in depth, CM Punk. Well, we've, we've seen many, but it's CM Punk, I don't know what the CM stands for, and I'm okay with it. What I don't understand is why they don't bring up the Pepsi gimmick if he's going to be a heel now. Well, we'll talk about what those tattoos mean in just a moment as well. well I but understand what the Pepsi tattoos At the same time he was in Ring of Honor back when they were letting uh, a, a, a talent work for either company, he was uh, also in TNA Wrestling, uh, part of Raven's, not Flock, but... Uh, Raven's Buddies? <laughs> uh, he Raven was, uh, this week turned 47. He did turn 47 this week. Uh, he was with uh, Raven's TNA Alliance called The Gathering. Uh, he was teamed with uh, Julio De Niro had a short run on some of those weekly pay-per-views in Is TNA Julio wrestling. De Niro related to D'Angelo De Niro? Could be. Hmm. 2005 OVW, September 26, 2005 is when he made his OVW television debut. June 24, 2006 made his debut in World Wrestling Entertainment uh, on an ECW during a house show actually defeating Stevie Richards. He made his TV debut shortly thereafter on the July 4th edition of ECW on Sci-Fi uh, with a little bit of a backstage promo and then drafted to Raw on June 23rd, 2008 during the draft that next week, cashing in Money in the Bank and becoming the new World Heavyweight Champion, defeating With help Edge. from David Batista. Edge was beaten down by the young man known as Batista. The young man. So, April 13, 2009, uh, during the draft this year, was drafted to SmackDown. Uh, so CM Punk has really had a Mioric rise in the wrestling business, specifically that in World Wrestling Entertainment. I wouldn't say Mioric. came over in the last three years. In three years to have been three-time champion, tag team champion, intercontinental champion. He's been in the mix, that's for sure. He's definitely been in the mix, and he's been on TV. And that's really what the guys want. You don't have to be the heavyweight champion all the time, John Cena. Triple H, Randy Orton. You don't have to be the heavyweight champion all the time or the WWE champion to be on TV and be relevant. But CM Punk can show you that. He's been on. He's been involved. He's been doing things, and he's worked his way through. CM Punk may be a, a model for future superstars to maybe try to follow along. You mentioned earlier those tattoos. They actually, and most of them, including Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton, a lot of those tattoos, while there are many of them, Undertaker as well, a lot of them have meaning. And uh, CM Punk's tattoos have a lot of meaning as well. Firstly, the Pepsi tattoo on his left shoulder. Uh, it's not really, well, it is It's Pepsi not logo. Pepsi, but it is, and it's not. It was inspired by the names of two of his signature moves. Uh, he wore that logo in the independent circuit. Uh, he's also had it uh, as part of his Titantron entrance video. Uh, basically got it as a joke. Uh, and they were getting beer logos where his fraternity brother's in college, and he decided to get a Pepsi, you know, he's straight edge. Got a Pepsi tattoo instead. It's also a reference to former minor league, I'm sorry, minor threat guitarist Brian Baker, who had a Coke tattoo, and explained that by saying, I like Coca-Cola. When people inquire about Punk's Pepsi tattoo, he replies, I like Pepsi in a similar manner. Now, who can tell me, or do you know the WWE talent who is obsessed with the Coca-Cola brand? That would be Jerry the King Lawler. Ding, ding. So that's the uh, little backstory on that Pepsi logo. The words straight edge are spelled out on his stomach. It's one of his oldest tattoos. He's also referred to it uh, in many times. He's got a sleeve tattoo on his arms that reads, Luck is for losers, and numerous good luck symbols, including a rabbit's foot, four-leaf clover, and a horseshoe. There are also four ace playing cards as a tribute to trainer A. Steel. The tattoo on the back of his left hand reading, No Gimmicks Needed, is a tribute to deceased wrestler Chris Candido. He also has a rose tattooed on his left wrist. And finally, the one on his knuckles say, Drug Free. Mm -hmm. CM Punk, tweet us who you want to see us go in-depth on next week. Teddy Long. <laughs> and uh, PWR Q&A meet. It's still 
dozens and dozens of emails coming across the wires each and every I'm week. I'm wondering if I should stop helping you. You do the Twitter thing. I've got the Facebook thing going in. We're putting the word out there consistently. I'm wondering if I should stop. We had an all-new Q&A episode yesterday. We'll have another one Monday. We'll have another one Tuesday and another one Wednesday. So keep those emails coming oh, to comments at PWRShow.com. Not PWR in my com. contract. Again, precedence goes to those emails that come across our website, PWRShow.com, um, over any that come from any other channels. Wow. What a show. Wow. We want to make sure we remind you guys that we are going to be on at a special day and time next week on 540 ESPN. Next Wednesday, 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 Wednesday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be live on 540 ESPN, filling the void of the one day that there is no wrestling on. I'm going to miss Dark Blue, though, my new favorite television show on TNT. It's a great show. you got to give it a try if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be on Wednesday night, 8 o'clock p.m., so be sure to tune in and also check out all the videos that the Pro Wrestling Report has to offer available right now at pwrshow.com. So we'll see you Wednesday uh, on the radio, and we'll see you again on Monday with another PWR Q&A. For the man they call me, that Dave Hero on the cause. This is Damian Nelson saying thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.